Hey all, it's Lawrence from Lawrence Creates, and welcome back to the next part in our game engine series. Now, in this one, I've decided that we are going to start implementing some physics into the engine. Um, and what we're going to be using is a physics engine called uh, Velcro Physics. Now, this physics engine is very similar to Box2D. In fact, I think it's sort of is like the, uh, the version above Box2D. Um, so what we are going to do is install a package, uh, which will give us all the, um, all the necessary libraries and whatnot for us to use. Um, and then we'll get on to implementing some physics. Um, another thing we're going to do, I'm not sure if we're going to get around to it, uh, this video, but we're also going to clean up our scripts a little bit. Um, as you can see, we made a vector two class. Uh, but our sprite is using floats for the um, uh, for the position and for the scale. Uh, eventually, we are going to change these so that they're vector twos. But for now, as we implement everything, we're just going to implement it as is, um, and then we will get to changing it around later on. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go to our let me see here our package manager, and we want to actually open the package console. Now I'm gonna leave this in the description, uh, but if we just paste install package genbox.valcrophysics and then version 0 0.1.0 alpha 0.2 and press enter, that's gonna install the package for us. You can see it in the dependency here. And now we can get started. Um, this is kind of much simpler to add than box2D when I, when I did um, the physics for my last engine. Um, so the, uh, the, the first thing that we kind of need to do here is, uh, so it is gembox.valcrophysics. And the first thing we want is the factories. Uh, we also just want to be using, uh, gembox.valcrophysics. And then we'll be using gembox.valcrophysics. I believe it's dynamics. Okay. And so now what we want to do is a couple of things. First, we want to create a, um, a public static world. And I'm just going to call this uh, game world. And I'm just going to make it a nullable. And so what we can do is before we actually just before anything starts above here, we're going to start creating our physics. So we have a new option here called settings, and we want a uh, continuous collision to be equal to true. And the next part we want is the our physics iterations. So we want physics iteration. Uh, we're going to equal that to four. Um, physics duration to four and then settings dot I think it's velocity iterations and we're gonna make that equal to 16. So these are all values that we can set up here just so that we can change them. Um, so we might just go and make a public float um, call this Physics position iterations set it to four and a public float six velocity iterations. I'm gonna equal that to 16. So over here, we're just gonna uh, get our position iterations and our physics iterations. Uh, let's see what's oh, that's an int, sorry. Uh, so just change these to an int. Okay, great. Uh, so the next sort of step is we need to sort of create the world. Um, and the way we do that, underneath the settings, uh, we're going to say game world is equal to new world. And this takes a vector two. Now when you install the package, it sort of installs a pre created like XNA vector class. Um, so we have to sort of use that for this, 
Um, but later down the line, we'll probably convert these to uh, to use our own vector two just so it's easier. Um, that way we can change gravity and whatnot. But for now, you just do new Microsoft.xna.framework.vector2 and zero on the X, nine on the Y. Now, the last step is just before the after draw, we are going to call the game world dot step. And I believe we want this to be one F divided I divided six. Um, that should give us a good step. Let me just double check this one. Make sure I've got the step right here. Uh, yeah, okay. That is the correct one. So now, uh, if we play the engine, nothing's going to happen. But uh, we just do this to make sure we got no errors, make sure we're assigning everything correctly, and it is still running. However, this time it's running with a physics world. Uh, so just to set things up, I'm going to just disable movement of our objects here. Um, so if we play this, everything should just be still. Great. And now back in the sprite class, I'm going to create a public void and this is going to be called enable physics. And we are going to want a public, actually, we also want to be using all of these as well. So just copy and paste all the Velcro physics usings uh, at the top here. And uh, we are, I think it's a body factory. And I'm going to call it Sprite Body. Uh, <clears throat> What's going on? Cannot declare a variable of step type body factory. And the right one is Let me see. It could just be body. Yeah, okay. I think it is body. So just public body, sprite body, and then you know enable physics, we go sprite body equals uh body factory dot create and we wanna create we wanna create a rectangle. We wanna pass in the world here, so this is gonna be create 2D engine dot game world. Uh, next is going to be our width, our height, and density. I'm just going to default to one. Next, we need a vector two from the X and A um, class. And this is going to be the position. So we're just going to pass in X and Y here, because that's our position. And next is the rotation. We're going to work with rotations later on. Uh, for now, we're just going to set the rotation to zero. Um, there's going to be no rotations in the game at the moment. We're just working on implementing the, the basic physics. Um, and then in the maybe next episode, when we, when we sort of refine everything with the Vector 2 class and all that, we'll add the rotation because there is a little bit of uh, messing around to do with the rotation. Um, but for now, we'll just set that to zero. And for this object, we are going to say uh, the body type is going to be dynamic. Okay, and so with that, back in our create 2D engine where we draw the, um, the image, uh, we're going to say if our sprite.sprite .sprite body is not equal to null, else, whoops, else, we are going to do this over here. Okay. Um, so basically, if uh, the sprite body isn't equal to null, we're going to do something with our physics. Otherwise, we're just going to draw a plain old image. Um, so we're going to copy that again up here. However, this time, um, for our positions, we're going to pass sprite.spritebody.x, uh, position, sorry, dot x. 
and again we do right that's right dot it body dot position dot y and that is it we should have some basic gravity for anything that we enable a physics body to we don't really need to worry about the width and height because that's the same doesn't matter um so if we go to our demo demo game now we can simply say first just to show you if we play the game now or we'll see the image should there we go it's just drawn nothing happens uh but now if we say temp dot enable physics should now get that image um be affected by gravity there it is and it starts to drop down fantastic so what we can do now is uh go and work on some uh, collision and again this is just going to be some basic implementation we're just going to be focusing on uh sort of rectangular collision and then once we get the rotation sorted then we're gonna work on um colliding with circles and all that but for now we're just going to say public void uh enable um I think it's static physics um and we're going to do the exact same thing here however for the body type we are going to let me just read this zero mass zero velocity set by user I think we actually want the kinematic here. And instead of this being enable static physics, we're just going to say enable kinematic. And so what we're going to do now is in our demo game for our circle, uh, we're going to enable the kinematic physics. And we are going to position. Uh, might just go. Set this to 300 and set this to 50. We should see that the square now collides. Whoops, going on here. Uh, height must be more than. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so with the circle here, because of the circle and we only use the width, uh, we're basically just going to say width and width for the x and y for the height. Um, <clears throat> So if we play that now, we should be good to go. And there we go. We got some collision. It's uh, as you can see, it's not sort of the, the units that the physics engine uses is kind of off compared to uh, what Skia uses, I believe. Um, so how we can sort of fix this is uh, for the width here. Might need to times it by something like one point three. And this will just take some messing around until you get all the scales fixed up, but we'll see what that does. It's a little better. Uh, let's maybe set it to 1.5. Okay, let's maybe try three. Okay, that's a little too much. Uh, let's go and do 2.3 maybe. 3 and see if that's good to go. Okay, I mean, it's good enough. Um, of course, it's, it's going to take some adjusting and we'll actually figure out the correct uh, units we need to use. Um, however, for now, we have um, basic physics and collision added to the game. Um, or to the engine. So now we can do something like uh, public void um, add force. We're actually going to use our own vector2 class for this. And then what we're going to say is sprite body dot, I think it's apply force. Yep. And this wants a, again, an X and A um, vector2, um, which is fine. I'm going to say a new x and a vector 2. But to simplify stuff when we're making our own games to this engine, we're going to be using our own vector 2 class. So this is just going to be force.x and force.y. Okay. 
Uh, so now in our demo game, um, probably want to call it after draw. We're going to say temp dot add force new vector two, and let's maybe say five on the x. See what that does. Uh, let's make it a little stronger. Uh, um, try to apply force. Definitely be working here. Now let's just make it on a very extreme value here. See what happens. That actually did start moving it. Hold on. The even more extreme value. Give me a second. Okay, there it is. Um, okay, so again, this is gonna take sort of some uh some messing around so that we can actually get some values that make sense. Um but yeah, you you can see. It's working pretty well there. Um, so with that, I think we're pretty much good for this video. We pretty much covered everything I wanted to cover. We've got the, um, the physics engine implemented. And so next video, we can sort of focus on refining it and adding the rest of its features. Um, of course, if you wanted to go and implement the rest of the stuff on your own, you can. Um, you've got stuff like apply talk and all that. However, just note that these all, um, a lot of these are to do with like, um, oh, what, do, what do you call it? Like rotation. We don't yet have rotation added. So even if you applied some sort of rotational force, yes, the physics engine is going to calculate that. Um, but it won't visually show that. Um, so for now we've got basically physics working with our position. And for our next video, we're going to try and focus on getting physics working with rotation. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys like this video. Um, and if you learned something from it, give uh, the video a like, comment down below what you want to see in the next video, um, or what you want to see in general. Um, I do appreciate it very much. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye now.